Okay, next video. I investigated the city where every drug is legal. This is Portland, Oregon, the city where every drug is legal. Drug addiction. Is every drug actually legal in Portland? I know, I know mushrooms are legal in Oregon. I don't think every drug is legal. I gotta watch the video, because I'm not gonna be able to read articles right now. Homelessness, crime, perhaps a few six of decriminal- Salvia? Salvia's legal in every state. Salvia is like one of those drugs where it's kind of like a loophole, like Delta 8. Uh, and so you could just buy it and ship it to your house. Realizing every drug, or so I think. Many believe this city is a government experiment gone wrong. But how did this all happen and what can be done to fix it? So I met up with Kevin, a social worker born and raised in Portland, whose life mission is to save this city before it's too late. I'm uh, born and raised in Portland, Oregon. I've worked in social services a couple decades now, primarily working with the homeless. I have watched as this has grown into a legitimate crisis. I believe we can solve this with just applying a little bit of common sense, a little L. A lot of passion. Those are two fentanyl users right there. We're, we're already in kind of the heart of it. In this one block radius, there's at least 50 camps. You're gonna see a lot of overdoses out here. I carry Narcan, which is an opioid blocker. Because of Measure 110, this decriminalized all drug use. It's now just an open air drug scene. Well, smash and grabs are oh, very- Oh, it, it's not legal, it's decriminalized. That's, there's a difference between the two. Common in Portland. We have a lawlessness city now. We have cops that can't even pursue the even really allowed to because it's not serious enough and we're gonna walk past the chinese it's not serious enough that somebody's breaking into your car and stealing everything you own the cops just say ah that's not our problem let's guard in here to an encampment uh in any that major stealing's not not a big enough crime in oregon what the f is a big enough crime in oregon robbing a bank the mayor which is a homeless person who's in charge of the encampment who i'm going to introduce you to one of the mayors be a little disagree with the camera until we say mayor hi. of the homeless so, so i don't know these two okay. keep that in mind okay. uh, put that put that hey, down here. Kevin? Okay. i want to see if jb and Kevin. yeah you guys on our right. right now all right well then we walk and we walk away well, I've been here longer than you, brother. Hey, man, I'm Kevin. Why are you walking up to him? He's got a knife in his hand. What's going on, brother? I'm Kevin. He gets shanked fucking 30 times. Tyler's just... <laughs> Tyler's... He's... What's up, man? I'm Kevin. I, I'm here. I'm here touring my boy. He doesn't even really know where he is. Gets stabbed dies Tyler's just in the middle on an underpass in some random bridge in Oregon his his fucking uh guy just got fucking stabbed to death oh, Kevin is bold right now TV. I'm never walking up to a guy with a knife why are they so rude <laughs> Like why 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 are they why are they so rude? Oh, you are the boldest man I've ever met. In my oh, life. I'm gonna be honest. So what appears is that we have a leadership change, and I I noticed that right away because I didn't recognize that. Bro's acting, bro's acting like they're like fucking wolves. Like <laughs> it appears that the pack alpha has changed. I'm gonna have to reevaluate the situation and edge myself into this community here. Maybe get them to start liking me. The new mayor's been reelected. Like what? He got reelected, or he just took the office. You know, there's still the people. Likelihood of him using physical violence to beat her up. Yeah, I'd, I'd say there was a high likelihood. Yeah. He, he did have his knife out, and luckily we got away. Yeah, I've been here multiple times the last couple years, uh, and I've built a really re a strong rapport with these people. And I've I've only been gone here. For I've gained a really strong rapport with these people. You know, they really love me, and so this 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 change in leadership is just not really going to go my way. It looks like I'm going to have to go down there and uh and talk to them. Proceeds to mosey on down. What's up, guys? I'm Kevin. Uh, I used to know the previous leader, Mark. They just start fucking ripping his limbs off. <laughs> they just fucking grab him. They strap him to a wheel. Just fucking crank his limbs off. For a week, uh, I know of a homeless camp that- Tyler, run! I've been in this scenario before. It's about a mile and a half from here, and a guy has shotguns in the trees where if you step the wrong place, it's going to shoot you. What? Kevin just be fucking spitting words, bro. What are you saying?
There were a strong rapport of these people, and I've, I've only been gone here for a week. Uh, I know of a homeless camp that's about a mile and a half from here, and a guy has shotguns in the trees where if you step the wrong place, it's gonna shoot you. And this was the moment I realized Kevin is insane. How many other times have you been assaulted? I've been stabbed twice. <laughs> I've been punched multiple times. I've had needles uh, shoved into my back. Oh my needles. God, needles shoved into your back? Bro, what if you have AIDS? Like, I'm not, I'm not going through that. You have needles sho shoved into your back. Bro, you could literally get AIDS. Needles, so I had to get tested for HIV. Had a guy try to cut my head off with a machete last year. He chased me full speed. And the only reason I lived is because I dove last second as he swung. And after we called the police and he was arrested, he said, I was trying to kill you because I wanted to be murdered by the police. So I got hit once. He was upset I was filming him. The reason why I was filming him is because he was committing a crime, right? Punched me again, knocked me to the ground. Uh, got hit in the head, got Jeez. kicked, and then he walked away. Jesus. All right, that homeless guy isn't scary. He just threw like a clementine at you. <laughs> Hit in the head, got Jeez. kicked, and then he walked away. Jesus. Open the door! You're a patient guy, you gotta yeah. say. You know, they're hearing voices, command voices that might say, I need to kill Tyler. After hearing how many times Kevin's nearly been killed out here doing this, we went downtown to talk to some drug addicts to figure out how this all happened. So what's going on here? Is this fentanyl use? Well, I'm gonna go talk with him really quick. Okay. This looks like someone's tripping. <laughs> <laughs> I am never I'm gonna go I'm gonna go have a conversation with him dude he's out of it he is out of it buddy is actually dude he's tweaking I'm gonna go talk to him thing potentially hey I'm with my friends I was wondering if you would want to talk to him for a second for five dollars is this something you would want to do dear no? Okay. Five dollars, dude. Give him more than five bucks. So this is, uh, you know, she is severely mentally ill. She's holding a fentanyl pipe. And as you see, her oh. pants are completely down. Oh, I see. I did not notice and, that. And, yeah. you know, she... <laughs> okay, Tyler. Okay. Honestly, I didn't know that she was butt naked. Uh, I mean, I, 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 until you said that, I had no idea. Really is someone who needs serious mental health treatment and okay. it's not she's not getting out here so fentanyl has completely replaced almost all other drugs yeah. it got really popular the last couple of years started i think we think in philadelphia origin point is philadelphia kensington where we went uh, that's what we believe train Dude, i see that all the time when i had to do my uh y'all remember when i had the poker sponsored streams i had to go to I, I did it i did them in philly uh at one of my friend's houses and i would drive like an hour and a half there and <laughs> Every day, like, there would just be people, like, strung out in fentanyl. Like, it, it, some of them would be holding signs. And I always feel so bad, right? Because, like, when a homeless person is, like, asking for help, you want to help them. But normally, like, I would – I've given homeless people food. I don't – I tend to not give them money just because I, I – especially when it's in, like, Philadelphia. Like, I know they're going to buy – fentanyl with it right not all of them but most of them in the sense of like dude half of the people holding signs were clearly strung out while they were holding the signs uh and i just like i want to help but like what do you do like you can't other than like giving them food and maybe like trying to help them like get into a different scenario just handing them a 20 dollar bill isn't gonna fucking help them and fetty really started there we just because you use needles so what's going on here he Seems to be symptomatic, so I'll go say hi to him and see if I can okay. offer him a. Oh my God! What Kevin? What the fuck, Kevin? Relax. He seems to be angry. Let me go. Let me go. Fucking approach him and see if he fucking stabs me. No. These two people as well seem to be tripping, doing fentanyl or what? Yeah, and right in front of you know a bar and grill. No bar and grill. A lot of businesses around here are closed down because of the crime because of the drug use this is my friend tyler how you doing i see you're holding a fentanyl straw do you want to share with me uh when you started using fentanyl uh... almost everybody on the streets now are using fentanyl are they really yeah how long you been out here a while i don't remember exactly how long okay well let me ask you is anybody out here helping you get off the streets nope take care of yourself oh. man how you doing, sir? So you're doing fentanyl right now, yeah? I was loading some speed. Right? Do you do any other drugs besides speed? Yeah, I mean, I do drugs occasionally. Okay, what are we talking here, fentanyl? I do drugs occasionally, as he's about to fucking smoke some speed. Mushrooms, LSD. 
I like MDMA, MDA, uh, 2CB, 2C7, 2CI, 2CE. It's a lot of drugs, yeah. People out here approaching you and offering help, you know, like outreach workers. So you feel like no one's really giving you help out here? When you're homeless, you, uh, you have to like have a, a house to get a job. Sure. You can't do it the other way around. You have to shower yeah. before work. Right. You have to know that you're going to be able to sleep and get up that time. Are you afraid to be out here at night? I mean, that I mean is the problem. And it's also just... They have, like, a lot of, I don't know, Oregon, but, like, a lot of cities have programs where, like, you can help homeless people get jobs and get clean and everything, but for them to help you, you have to be willing to get clean, and that jump is a hard thing to go through. And even outside of that, if they don't have a program in that specific city, if you're a homeless person, like, you can't really, like, there might be jobs available, but, like, would, would, let me just give an example. Would a Walmart rather hire uh, a 70-year-old man that has a home and is going to not really do the job that well, or a homeless guy that can't even shower before work. They might do the job better, but, like, they're not going to give the job opportunity to the person that might not work well, right? I was sleeping in my sleeping bag, and yeah. I set up someone yelling at me, and he started socking me in the face. I couldn't walk the other day, and they took me to the hospital, and they, like, kicked me out. And I had an episode where I couldn't even get up at the hospital. And they're just like, bye. I felt very underwhelmed and underappreciated. Hold People on, out here. He, he's breathing unnaturally. You okay, brother? You okay? Hey, Stu, you good? You yeah. okay, bro? Okay. Yeah, he, 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 he's falling asleep. He, he deep breathes. Okay. Breath. And, like, seriously, um, yeah. these cold nights that we've had, yeah. If people weren't high out here, they'd die of, from freezing. Well, thank you for your time, Johnny. I appreciate it. The situation for these homeless seemed brutal. But wow. how did Portland get to this point? And as we watch, looks like he's about to die. Around the corner, I saw another guy injecting a needle into his arm. Jay. Jay My name's Tyler. Jay, good to meet you. Jay, what are you shooting up here? Xylazine? No. No. Good old fashioned white boy meth. Got it. How long have you been out here? How long have you been homeless in Portland? I've been homeless since 96. So 1996. Okay. Jay, how dangerous. He has not had a home for 27 years. How do you survive? So did, is it out here on these streets? It's gotten a lot worse. This, just in the last year, I've seen three different shootings where somebody's been shot and killed. Hey, brother. How you guys doing? Number one thing homeless people need. Do you think it's housing? Yeah, 17,000 ghost houses in this city. And most are telling us that no one's out here really approaching you all. They're stealing yeah. everybody's stuff. You have people steal from you? Oh, yeah. 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 Rapid response? They are the worst. Oh, Rapid oh, response oh, goes oh, into oh, people's oh, camps, oh, gives oh, them 72 oh, hours to get out, oh, and if they're not out in that 72 hours, they take everything they own, and they got to start over again. Wow. There shouldn't be anybody homeless right now. Yeah. $3.2 billion? If I had that money, I bought all those houses and yeah. gave it every person that needed a home a home. So once you give them the home, what happens next with the, the drug price? That's up to them. Well, that's it. I, I, what he's saying is not going to work, right? 3.2 billion homes, I'd buy everybody a home and give them a home. That's not solving the issue of how they would then pay for everything and how they would get over the drug problem, right? Because once you're in that scenario, it's very hard to get out, but like, if they just give you everything, the, the main issue initially is also the fact that you're on drugs too, right? Like, if you're addicted to meth, it is hard to have a steady job. It's going to take at least five years for them to get adjusted. Okay, so what if their bills and they fall further into addiction and use the homes or destroy it? Is it that's the risk with dealing with humans. I'm an addict. Yeah. I've been out here uh, 48 years homeless off and on. Well, the 48 years. Homeless here clearly felt left behind by the city. What led to so many of them ending up on the streets in the first place? Have a great day. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, hey, brother. Does your family know you're here? No? Okay. How old are you? You're 22. 22, dude. Oh my god. Dude, he's a year older than me. I gotta like this video. This is a good video. Okay. Yeah. You know, you can recover th from this. You know this, right? You know how to get into a shelter? Let's try to go into a shelter tonight and see how it works. Will you? Please. With a 22-year-old kid on the streets barely able to speak anymore, common sense would argue drugs have an obvious and major role in this homelessness crisis. But what is the city doing to help this? So Kevin, you said the shelters, so there are places these people- Is Portland a poor city? I've never been to Oregon. There's more homeless pe There's far too many in our city living in a dangerous and uh, squalid conditions. 50% more, 50 more uh, homelessness in 
Portland from 2019 to 2022. So it's increased rapidly, but it's only number 80 out of 182 cities on the list. So there's worse cities, but I feel like this one seems pretty bad. Go to the shelters. You get stolen from more in the shelters than I you see. do out here. You can live in a tent in a park or you can go to a shelter where there's 91 bunk beds and one large room with no air conditioning where people are coughing all night. There's some people living right under here and I just want to introduce you to them if they're still here. So it Damn, is it smells immediately like. I know. Hey there, how you doing, man? I noticed you have a suitcase. Is that what you use to carry all your things? And you move from place to place every night? Yeah, it's just a blanket suitcase. How easy is it to get your hands on fentanyl out here? Oh, crazy. And you know what this is, of course. Yeah. It's... Have you ever had to use one of these on yourself or someone else? Or... Yeah, somebody's had to use it on me like five times. How yeah. many times have you tried to quit? No, oh, I, I need to be really honest with you. This isn't going to lie. He looks young, too, chat. How old does he look? Dude, he looks like 24. You're not going to last another year or two out here, brother. I'm not. You'll be dead in a year if you don't stop. You know this, right? Please. Would you go into a shelter or go into treatment or detox? I, I, go, I go to shelters. I mean, and there's a shelter right here. I, I, I know where it is. Okay, right on. So we find we see yeah. a lot of people in wheelchairs with the uh, un unable to walk that are stuck out here homeless. Okay. And they're, of course, the ones being victimized more than anybody. They're assaulted because they can't chase them, run away, any of sure. that. And that's very common, sadly. Wow. Kevin, what is this right here? Blanchett House of Hospitality. The has been Their muscles are literally degrading? Yeah, because they're not eating a lot. They're doing a fucking shitload of fentanyl. Uh, like, your body's just going to start deteriorating food to the homeless for decades. Okay. Look, I'm all about helping a person meet their basic needs, but let me ask you this. Yep. If you feed a person 10 years in a row, have you done them any good? Yeah, you got to teach a man to fish. And out of nowhere, we heard this in the distance. And I'm like, you know what? That's actually true. This is neglect. Uh, yeah. Let's go. So that was a gunshot. Okay, let's go. So let's go. So how often do you hear gunshots out here? And who just got blipped? Well, Someone who just got, just got blickied up? All right, Kevin. Tell me, tell me straight, man. Who just got, who just got their shit rocked in? Who just got, who just got shot up, bro? Blipped? Shot, you think? I don't know, but that was a gunshot. Okay, you're used to it. Well, yeah. I mean, you hear him. It was pointed at us. Okay. It, it was not pointed at you. See, now you're just making shit up. Like that fucking, like that annoys the shit. It was pointed at us. It was a rocket launcher. They had an LMG on the top of the roof. They were shooting at us. Like, it was a gunshot, bro. Okay? Like, yeah, that's scary as fuck. Like, it sounded like it was a fucking mile away. It did actually come from the camp we were kicked out of an hour ago when the guy pulled the knife on us. You know, murders are common out here. I mean, one way to get away with a murder out here is to call it an overdose. This happened to one of my clients recently is they put two fentanyl pills in his drink and he did he wasn't a user and died of an overdose. It was, wow. you know, the fentanyl powder and they put it in his drink. Actually, they did it sort of as a joke. He overdosed and died. So we're not going to get fentanyl overdose. There is a 60% um, chance that's not going to happen. Uh, and you have Where the fuck are you getting that statistic from? Narcan, in case I touch it or Pasha touches it or you touch yeah, it. Yeah, 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 I'm prepared. But tell me about decriminalization of drug use in Portland. <sighs> Portland, or really the state of Oregon, decided to decriminalize drugs was because some had argued that we should... But the, you're comparing certain drugs that should be de should be decriminalized with ones that shouldn't, right? Like that, Like, saying every drug is legalized, that's a problem, right? But when they're sitting there and they're like, oh, mushrooms were legalized, like... Lumping, like, lumping fucking hallucinogenic mushrooms that can be used for, like, medicinal reasons with meth? <laughs> like, that's not... Lumping a literal plant with meth is, like, that's not comparable, right? Some drugs should not be legalized. But, like, saying that, oh, because all of them were legalized, that means all the ones that were legalized shouldn't have been... That's a bad argument. Shouldn't make drug use punitive, and then we need to offer treatment. And that sounds great. But Portland took inspiration from places like Portugal and the Netherlands, places that successfully decriminalized drugs. But the big difference between them and Portland is that they had rehabilitation systems in place that they proved to work before they did it. Kevin thinks that Portland forgot to include recovery, detox, treatment, all that stuff that they promised really isn't happening. A person who's using yeah, they went, they took the first step of decriminalizing but then never never took the other steps to actually help with it. So they just legalized fucking all these drugs. They're not legalized, decriminalized. 
Uh, and now everybody's just fucking dealing with the issues of it. Drugs oftentimes have gone through a, a trauma. And so what they lack is rational thinking. And so people who already have make poor choices are unable to really stop in any way. But now you give them the freedom to use as much as they want. Sure. And that's true. Yeah, for the sub. Fine. But why did the people of Portland vote for this? So we went to Fentanyl Fountain to ask the locals their opinion on the decriminalization of drugs. This is the fountain. Now, Fentanyl of Fountain? Course, any other day of the week, it's going to be a completely different scene here. They, this uh, worse throughout the week yeah they come here friday night and just and sweep everybody and clean it up yeah and then the vendors come here and you know set set up shop how long have you been out here in portland almost 20 years you were here from before and after decriminalization i was okay. i was and I, I it got progressively worse for a number of years but um they're definitely cutting the meth with fentanyl because there'd be people running around they're really happy in the morning just losing their shit in the afternoon. Yeah. How does this place change after today? There are well, isn't fentanyl something that they use in, like, hospitals, right? If, like, there's a difference between... It's the same thing with, like, meth. Or, like, or not meth. Like, heroin. You do, like... You do, like, medical heroin at a hospital. Like, when they give you... But it's, like, clean, right? It's, like, stuff to put you to sleep. It's not, like, laced drugs. What is fentanyl? It's a, it's a type of drug. But I'm saying... Not meth. Yeah, I said meth, not meth. Heroin. It's like you do like heroin and like certain types of fentanyl at hospitals when like you're going under for like surgery or something. But like the drug fentanyl is much different and they'll lace certain drugs with fentanyl even if you're not just trying to buy straight up fentanyl. First place. But what about the homeless people who have moved to the outskirts of Portland? What's going on here? Well, this is the infamous long line of RVs. We're going to be able to count at least 100 of them. Okay. Yeah, look at all these RVs. Where are the services to help these people? The fact that there's families out here stuck in RVs in the middle of the summer is really unacceptable. As we drove past hundreds of RVs. I was just RVs. reading the article. RVs with homeless families living in cars. I realized that homeless people were living anywhere here to survive. There was a, a couple of families living in these tunnels that kind of go underground Portland. Okay. But even among the homeless, hierarchies, status, and power have developed in unexpected ways. All right, we've made it. Right across the way, these are million dollar condos. It's where the homeless. I feel like I would try and go to a different city. Like, I know there's some homeless people that actually will do that. Like, if you're in Portland, like, I would try and go south. Or, like, north. Like, towards, like, Seattle, maybe. Somewhere, like, where you might actually be able to get more help. Right? Almost live, and they have the identical view. It's really incredible architecture. You walk to a different city? Well, I mean, it'd take forever. But, dude, if you're in a scenario where you're in Portland, Oregon, and they're not going to help you, like, the only option you might have is literally walking to a different city. Anybody home? Oh, my Hello? God. Anybody home? Hello? So no one's home. Probably not. Is it risky for us to be here? Well, yeah, I don't want to invade their space too much. I... There's like a machete and an axe right there. All right, let's get out of here. And they've kind of finessed the system by not buying a million dollar property over here and just, you know, building one instead. So this is literally tens of thousands of pieces of driftwood and someone has tunneled in and there's a camp inside of here. Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> and they have boats right here to go on the water and explore. This... That's almost like, I mean, that's almost like living in the woods at that point. That's kind of cool. Well, yeah, if they weren't, like, addicted to meth. But I'm saying, like, there's people that might live like that purposefully. But I think the scenario they're in, they're just doing that to survive. This is, would be like a six- I would rather live in this than a tent, but still. Third foot, one bedroom apartment. So how many people do you think live in these communities with max capacity? I believe about 15. 15. So this is truly the upper elite, the Bill Gates of the homeless out here. Full on mega mansion, bike in there. Mayor, presumably, of this community. And what makes this extra special is he's the only one with a pier. Oh, it's so, beautiful. So... This place right here, pristine, beautiful. And then a nice access point to a nice little ocean view. The detail, Boy. look at the bricks. All right, Tyler, let's not act like this is a fucking MTV Cribs. They're still homeless people, okay? Like, dude, uh, they got a nice access point looking over the pier. They got a nice window here for when the sun rises. All right. Oh, my God, you're right. That's detail, that's incredible. This is crazy. It's very creative what they've done out here. Sure. These are humans. It doesn't matter who you voted for. Can't we all work together? <laughs> oh, my God, dude, that scared the fuck out of me. Why did that scare me?
me to do it. Say if you want real change, vote differently. Yeah. Vote for the candidates, vote for the people with common sense ideas, the ones yeah. actually make a difference. So how could anyone watching help you on your mission? Well, um, I have a Twitter page, okay. Kevin V. Dahlgren, or just type Kevin Dahlgren in Homeless and you're gonna find me. And then uh, truthonthestreets.org is my website. Okay. And of course- I Well, it's good he's trying to help, but I mean like, dude, he's gonna get stabbed one day. Like, I mean, he's already been stabbed twice, but like you just start walking up to fucking communities and they don't want you to be there, bro. <laughs>